and this is part three of outdoor watercolour painting. So in this part we're talking about your watercolour painting kit. So maybe the most important thing but it's also quite lengthy and um, I want to make it as simple as possible. So if you click on the link below you can see my article on this and get the full details. So basically the most important thing in this whole video about your watercolour painting kit is to make it as light as possible. Take the minimum, the absolute minimum. So what do I mean by that? So I mean something like just three brushes, three brushes, um, just three colours is enough and uh, just one small pad about this kind of size something that you can easily fit into a backpack so um, that's basically what I mean so that's the number one lesson to learn in this video travel as light as possible with the minimum number of materials taking a lot of materials will really not help you with outdoor watercolour painting so I'm going to go through the items each individually and first of all I'm going to talk about brushes. So like I said I will normally take about three brushes so these are what I take. My first one is my hake, Japanese hake. So there you go. It's not very wide, just about two centimetres. What's that? Almost an inch not quite so this is my power this this is the brush that does all the work yeah this brush does all the labor then i've got my liner brush this is my fancy fancy brush i almost said fancy man <laughs> this is my fancy brush so this is what i do all my lines with yeah all my funny squiggly lines with this brush i love this brush it's so elegant yeah it's a wonderful brush, liner brush, sometimes called a rigger brush. Okay, and then here is my bamboo brush. So this is really useful um, it, because it gives like a rough edge, very, very rough edge. But when you bring the hairs together, it can give you a lovely thin line as well. So I can use it like a round brush for nice edges, but I can also use it in a rough way too so very very useful so those are the three my three main friends if you like so what next also sometimes i will use a round brush there's a round brush this is a very nice round brush but most most round brushes are okay and uh, mine might be a little bit smaller than that normally for the size i'm using the small pad and also i'd I might use a big mop like this. I love these big mops. They're beautiful brushes, but they can be a bit expensive. So you don't have to buy these straight away. You can use a hake instead, but um, they're very nice brushes. So I might also use a really big hake, a really wide one if I'm painting big, but normally when I go outdoors, I'm just painting small. So I hope that's okay, I hope that's useful. Now, next thing is water, well, yeah, the water container. So what you put your water in. So this is what I often use at home and it you can fold it down like that or you can push down and out it comes. So that's really nice. But the um, only problem with this is if you're using uh, an easel and it's not got a tray, then you need something with holes or a handle so you can tie it with some string to your easel. But maybe if you're a beginner, doesn't matter because you're sitting on the ground, something like that. Yeah, so anyway, these are very nice for holding your water. So I sometimes use one of them okay and i sometimes use one with a handle that i tie to my easel okay what next 
paints. So basically you can do many, many paintings with just three colors. So hopefully on this video, I'm going to show you a big series now of paintings that are all done with just three colors. And I hope you'll be impressed by how good they look. I think they really, really look good. So these are the colors that I use. Um, the first one is yellow ochre. I'm not sure if you can see that. Oh, it's upside down. There we go, maybe. Okay, anyway, yellow ochre. And uh, the next one is permanent alizarin crimson. So can you see that? I'm sorry if you can't see that. And uh, the next one is Talo Blue. And you can't see that. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that. But Ultramarine Blue is also okay. I use this color because it's more powerful. I like power. I'm a bit, bit of a heavy-handed watercolor painter, actually. I like power. Uh, powerful colors. So those three colors, yellow ochre and uh, alizarin crimson, permanent, and uh, phthalo blue, I think that's how you pronounce it, that's all you really need. And um, hopefully you're seeing a lot of paintings now on the screen that I've done with just these three colors. And the one more that I would add is uh, white, titanium or titanium white so i find that very very useful for highlights so that's really all you need but if you go to my article i give you a full list of the whole set that that you could possibly need um, there might be one or two additional colors you might want to add but with that set that would be enough for just about everything roughly i can tell you what they are so basically it's three groups of colors so this is way too serious. I don't think you need all these colors, but if you're very serious, then here you go. This is my full set of paints almost. So three groups. The first group is earthly colors. I call them earthy colors, whatever. So that's your yellow ochre, your burnt sienna, and your burnt umber, earthy colors. Next, you've got your blues, and I really only use about two blues. So one is my phthalo blue, and the other one is a cerulean blue. What a name. I love that name, but I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But if you go to my site, you'll find the name, cerulean blue. It's, it's basically just a light blue. It's a beautiful color, uh, but it is a little expensive, that one. So paints come in different prices. N nearly all my paints are the cheapest, but that one is expensive. So uh, if you wanna look for an alternative, then just look for a light blue one, but that one's very good. And all of these paints as well are permanent, which I didn't write in my article because it's mostly for beginners and amateurs. So it's not too important but I've always used permanent colors and the cheapest most of the time but cerulean blue is just a beautiful color and so that's why it's here okay so the third group I call brights or colorfuls and that's basically alizarin crimson which is a bit of a dark red and then pyrrole red now pyrrole red I hope I'm pr pronouncing that correctly is a nice bright red, but I'm not sure if it's actually the best red. I choose it because it's not poisonous and I've got a daughter and uh, maybe I'm worrying there too much because she doesn't use my paints a lot just now and again. And I doubt it's that dangerous, but the poisonous one is cadmium red but that's the one most watercolor artists seem to use. So you might want to follow them rather than follow me. But I use Pyrrole Red, but I haven't really tested that against Cadmium Red to check which is the best. So, you know, your choice. And then um, also I might use a yellow now and again, like, um, is it, oh my goodness, how do I pronounce this? 
Aurelian, Aurelian. But anyway, I didn't even include that, but just a bright yellow, that's all. And then sometimes I include a, a green. There's a green, cobalt green. I quite like that green, but I don't really use any other greens. And of course, my titanium or titanium white. And that's it. Those are all my paints. But like I said, the first three I mentioned, I would strongly recommend you use just them at first. And to be honest, you don't really need to take your tubes of paint with you. You can just put them in your palette, you know, squeeze them into your palette and just take your palette. Trust me, travel light. The only one that I would take is my tube of white paint. Okay, so my palette, so I used to have a metal palette because I don't know, I just thought metal was better but um, it does actually get very hot when you're outside on a summer day because metal conducts heat. So it starts to, your thumb starts to sizzle. So um, maybe a metal palette isn't the best, but I've noticed other people seem to like them as well. So I know it sounds a bit cheap, but plastic is not only cheap, but great. So I strongly recommend a very simple palette. Don't get one with lots and lots of wells in it. Um, get one with just three or four deep wells. So they need to be deep so you can make big mixes and you've got a few spaces to put paints. So I'll show you my palette. I love this palette. Look at this. It's got a lid. So that means it's airtight. So if I put some light, wet, slightly damp tissue in there, it should keep my paints wet. I'm so lazy that I never do that, but I like that. And I like being able to close it because that's convenient, right? When you go painting, you need a palette with a lid. Otherwise you've got to cover it with cling film. And then if you look inside, look at that. One, two, three, three big wells. And this one is huge. It's huge. So I can make a really big mix in there. It's beautiful, isn't it? And look at that. These are all the colors I will use. So maybe I used a few more than I said. So if I did, I'm sorry about that. Oh yeah, that's brilliant orange. I love that for faces. And I've got a dark green there. That's Viridian. That I was just experimenting with that. There's the Aurelian, Aurelian. Oh, God help me. But you know what? You'll find it. Just get permanent yellow. But it's something like Aurelian, Aurelian yellow, something like that. But lovely colours, right? And a lovely palette. So um, I couldn't find this at Dick Blick online, online, what do you call it, art store. But at least now you've got a good idea of what a fantastic palette looks like. Isn't it fantastic? Yeah. So I bought this one in Japan, but you're probably, yeah, it says made in Korea. But anyway, I'm sure you'll find one in America or England similar to that. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so continuing with our big list and next is water container. So Luckily, they had this at my local art shop and they, they gave this to me, which was very kind of them. But a plastic bottle is fine. It's not going to make any difference to your paintings. So plastic bottle is good. Next, paper. So paper is a big deal, right? People really worry about it. And in some ways, you should worry about it. And in some ways, you shouldn't. So what do I mean by that confusing sentence? Sorry. So what I mean is don't use cheap watercolor paper. However, look at this. This is a multimedia drawing book. Yeah. Now this on this paper, I can do amazing paintings that I can even sell. It's really, really good and it's half the price of normal watercolor paper, half the price. This cost me about maybe $10 and it's got about, I don't know, 15, maybe 20, maybe 20 sheets in it, a lot, 
probably 20 or more sheets of paper in it. So it's really, really good. And it's really important because, um, okay, I didn't want to do too much detail, but this is why. When you paint watercolors, often you're going to feel a little bit nervous about doing a good painting. Now, if you're working on paper that's a bit expensive, I can guarantee you, you're not going to paint as freely as you would on fairly cheap paper. And watercolor pa painting is not like oil painting. With oil painting, you can just repaint, repaint, repaint until you get what you're looking for. Watercolor is a bit like one chance. So if you don't make that stroke with a kind of brazen indifference, couldn't care less, bold manner, then you're not going to make a good painting. So that's why this is really essential. And you know, this is a golden tip in my opinion. Don't buy the watercolor paper yet. Buy one of these multimedia pads and get good at uh, doing paintings on this. Really, really confident, brave paintings. Experiment, yeah? So I don't, I don't want to talk too much about that because I can talk about that forever. The, the only drawback with that kind of paper is it's thin. So if you are a little aggressive with it, like if you rub on it or try to scrape on it with your fingernail or a spatula, then there is a good chance that it will tear. So it's not very tough. So I'm not against normal watercolor paper, but I just think at first when you're a beginner and an amateur and even semi-professional like me, it's still good to use. I use it all the time because I still can't paint with the same, what do you call it? The same abandonment um, on normal watercolor paper as I can on this cheaper paper. And it really, really shows. So I just have to tell you that. But when you, but please do try normal watercolor paper. So you probably haven't got this where you are. Oh my goodness, it's shiny. It's called Watson, yeah? So basically this is the main paper my art store sells. And um, there are two kinds of paper, right? There's a wood pulp and there's cotton. So I go for cotton because it absorbs the water. With wood pulp, it just stays on the top a long time. And I just, I just don't like that. So wood pulp papers are very cheap, but I just don't like them. They're okay, but I'm not mad on them. So I recommend the cotton watercolor papers. And I recommend, look, this is 239 grams. I hope you can see that. Sorry about this. There you go, 239 grams. So normally 300 grams is best, but you can get away with lighter ones. And this is really, really good. This paper is really, really good. So you will have to experiment with watercolor papers to find your favorite. So that can't be helped. And there are many different names and different brands. So please try them out. One good thing is some people sell pads that have a variety of different papers in them, different brands. So that is really good to get. And sometimes they, they can be cheaper than normal paper. Now, I don't know why, but they can be. So if you can find them, then buy them. So um, I used to use, is it Saunders and Waterford, which is wonderful watercolor paper, but it's very expensive. So I just decided to start using this cheaper one, Watson, which is made by Japan, which is a country where I live. And they just make a lot of quite cheap watercolor products, but they're also good quality. So my paints also are Holbein, which are good quality. They're Japanese, but they're also the cheapest you can buy for quality, that is, with quality. And the other thing about paper is I don't like loose paper. I don't like pads uh, because um, around the edges where they put the glue, I just find it's a bit funny 
with the uh, water. The water is not like flowing freely in around the edge. So that that's annoying for me. And also they buckle. They're not supposed to buckle, but my watercolor pads, they all buckle. And I, and I think that's true of Saunders and Waterford too. So that was really annoying. Um, if you look carefully, what I use are spiral bound pads with two clips on the bottom. So I find what happens is when I wet that paper, then uh, it expands. I can take my clips off and then reapply them after the paper's stretched out or expanded. And I never have buckling problems with these pads. So that's, that's just from my experience. And um, so I think that's really, really helpful. <laughs> so yeah, the next thing is clips that you apply to your paper. And then after that, you need a rag. So you need, um, it can be from old t-shirts or shirts, or you can buy them from your, I don't know what you have in America or England, but here we have Daiso. And everything in Daiso is like $1 or one pound. And you can get cloth, cloths, rags from that shop. And um, I really recommend doing that. I also do that because they're super cheap and you really need rags for wiping your brush on when you do watercolor painting. So the next thing is tissue. Tissue is really good. So don't skimp on this. So you need tissue for cleaning up messes, cleaning up your palette, but also as uh, with your paper, when you're painting, if you make a mistake, you can quickly, if you're very quick, wipe it off with the tissue and it will remove almost all of the paint. It depends on the staining strength of the paint. Some paints really stain the paper and some are a bit milder. But if you're really quick, you can just erase a wrong mark. So tissue is excellent for that and nothing else is going to be as good as that. Do not use toilet paper, it goes bitty. Tissue paper doesn't. And kitchen roll is too thick and clumsy because the other thing you can do with the tissue is you can do the um, lighting on clouds, rim lighting around clouds. So in a future video, I'll probably show you how to do that. But you can also, after you finish painting something, if it's too strong in tone, you can go over it with water and then wipe it or basically pat it or tap it, not tap it, pat it gently with your tissue and or wipe it gently with your tissue and it will make it fainter. So tissue is an excellent thing that you really, really need. Please use tissue. Here I wrote cleaning tissue, but to be honest, you don't need cleaning tissue. It's probably because I'm from Japan and they're so serious about cleanliness. You can just use a spray bottle on your fingers and then wipe it, wipe the paint off with some tissue. So sometimes your fingers will get dirty. You'll get paint on your fingers. You'll get paint on your brushes. So sometimes you need to spray it so and then wipe it with tissue. So that leads me to my next item, which is a spray bottle. So again, I got this from Daiso. So this is like 100 yen, $1, one pound. It's really important, really important. Why? Okay, so why is it important? Because when you're painting, sometimes your paint will dry out very quickly. When that happens, you can't continue. You have to stop. But if you spray above it, do not spray, spray directly at your paint, spray above it so it falls down onto the paint. Um, so if you spray on your paint, it will keep it wet for a longer time. And so you can do more work on it and keep going with it. And you'll be surprised sometimes by how quickly the paint can dry out. It's absolutely essential. Also, it's good for cleaning out your palette, spraying your palette, and if you get your hands dirty, but it's also very good for creating texture in your painting. 
So if you spray something, you'll get little drops and it will create this lovely little pattern on your paint if you time it correctly. But timing it correctly is a fine art and difficult to do, but it's really, really good fun and it can look really, really beautiful. So a spray bottle is essential. Okay, just two more items left. So the next one, I think, no, three. So the next one is a pencil or a pen. So I don't do a lot of drawing in my, uh, when I go painting. But um, if you're going to paint nature, natural things, often you don't need a pencil so much. But of course, if you're doing animals or people, then a pencil is really, really useful. So for that, I will use a pencil. And sometimes I will use a pencil a little just for a basic outline of a tree, basic outline of a mountain, but I keep it very simple because I think too many, or if you do a detailed pencil drawing, I think it's going to lead to a rigid painting. So that's the problem with doing or using a pencil too much in my opinion. So I try not to draw too much and to keep it sketchy and simple. But if I'm painting a city scene, then I don't do detailed either, but I'm very careful about where I put the cars, so I need to draw them. And I'm very careful about getting the size right and the direction right and my perspective lines right. That really is important, but I won't do details with a pencil. So I hope that that answers the question in a clear way. Now, I've gone off normal pencils, and nowadays I use a clutch pencil like this. So this is a German one. And once again, here we go. Um, what's it called? Graf Gear. I, oh no, it's not German. It, maybe it's Japanese, Pentel. So Graf Gear. Graf Gear 500, I hope you can read that. But I have made a long list in my article with every detail. I think that you need. So anyway, Graph Gear Pentel, and this one is 0.9, the lead. So it's thicker than normal because I get very annoyed by them breaking all the time. So this has a very thick lead in it, and it's also 2B. It says B, but it's actually 2B lead. And I find these excellent, really, really excellent. And they feel very, very nice too. I really, really like them a lot. But saying that, I also love using a pen. Yeah, I think pen and watercolour together look very, very good. And also pen doesn't smudge. So when I do sketches that I want to keep, I won't do pencil sketches anymore because over time they're going to smudge. And I really, it really annoys me nowadays. I got really particular about that, but it's the truth. So I like to use pen and then sometimes I do a few washes over the top and I think it looks marvellous. And another good thing about using pen rather than pencil is that you just don't care about mistakes. This is so important. Stop worrying about little mistakes. Don't care because over time you'll just get better and better at uh, making the right marks. And once your drawing really starts to take off, those little mistakes, nobody will notice them, or if they do, just just doesn't matter. It just, yeah, I, I think I rarely erase any of my pencil marks, very, very rarely. Sometimes I will. And for that, I will use a kneadable putty rubber or whatever you call it, kneadable eraser. Sorry, eraser. In England, we used to say rubber, rubber, but now you say eraser. So it's kneadable, it's soft, it's wonderful. It, um, I recommend this one because it doesn't damage your uh, paper so much. So this is the one to get, and sometimes I do use it. So it's not, it's not a useless item. 
sometimes very very useful because sometimes I just I just draw the thing in completely the wrong place and then you know like a car or something I draw it in the wrong place and I need to or I draw it too big and then you just need to totally erase it and begin again so that happens to me sometimes then backpack so just get a camping camping yeah a camping backpack well nothing too big but you know a fairly large volume backpack that you can put all your materials in I mean if you can put them all in a smaller backpack then do that the lighter it is the better so you really need a backpack I think that's the best because it's the most comfortable and also your arms are free and that's important because when you're walking in the countryside if you're going up a mountain or down a mountain there is a chance that you might fall over and you need your hands free for breaking your fall I know it sounds like a small thing but uh, if that happens to you you'll probably be happy that your arms were free and you could break your fall so backpack is the best thing and also you want your arms free for taking a photograph and various other things so a backpack is the best and finally finally an easel so you don't really need an easel especially as a beginner you can just sit on the ground but uh, if you get very very serious or you just fancy buying an easel they're not really that expensive maybe about I don't know I think somewhere around about over what sixty dollars to a hundred dollars really quite cheap because they last forever yeah they really last a long time but the most important thing is to get a watercolor easel so a watercolor easel is one that can tilt very important oil painting easels normally are just totally vertical watercolor painting easels can tilt and you want to be painting at an angle so that depends on you it can be like this or it can be steeper or it can be very steep I wouldn't recommend that but some people like that but um, tilting your paper can be very very useful so um, and anyway you just need one do not paint vertically do not paint a watercolor painting vertically that's just not how you paint watercolors and you really do need an angle for the water to run down that's very important because you are often doing a wash and the wash has to run down and so that ability of your easel to tilt is very important so I hope this video was informative so I told you not just about the materials you need and also how to make it the minimum number to save you a lot of time and effort but also some important details about how to use your materials and um, just I hope a lot of helpful information about the kind of paper to buy the kind of paints and the kind of brushes so um, for more detailed information and also to see the list then please go to my website article there'll be a link below and then you can see that so that's all thanks and I hope you're enjoying this series and happy painting bye for now
Thank you.